Welcome, everybody. Um, this is Kristen Burton with the Office of Student Assessment. So this webinar is um, designed to talk about the test administration of the dynamic learning management assessment, and we're going to focus on the role of the test administrator. This webinar is intended to be supplemental resource to the test administrator and does not replace information found within the seven required training modules nor the test administration manual. Um, this presentation will be posted on the DPI DLM trainings website by early next week. This is the same website where the other two webinar modules have been posted. Information provided in today's webinar covers information that is presented in both the test administration manual and the required test administration modules. The test administration manual is the go-to guide for teachers administering the DLM assessment. It provides step-by-step -step guidance on how to set up P&Ps and first contact surveys and how to schedule and plan for assessment, as well as guidance for administering the assessment itself. The test administration manual also provides instructions for educators who want to use the optional instructional tools found within the DLM system. The test administration manual was recently updated to reflect changes made within the portal itself and to reflect practices that will be used for the spring operational assessment window from March 30th to May 22nd. Educators should familiarize themselves with the guide prior to administering the DLM assessment. Um, the DLM templates are available for five linkage levels identified within the DLM system. The highest level is the successor level, while the lowest level of the DLM assessment is at the initial precursor level. Please keep these five levels in mind throughout today's discussion. DLM has developed two ways in which the DLM assessment can be administered. For students at the lowest linkage levels and for all writing assessments, the DLM assessment is delivered by the teacher or the test administrator. For students at the higher linkage levels, the DLM assessment is administered via the computer. We will go into each of these different testing scenarios throughout the presentation in greater detail. There are three general categories for the teacher-administered testlets. First, teacher-administered testlets are used when the content of the assessment is designed for students who are developing or may not yet have symbolic understanding. Without symbolic communication, students cannot yet respond to the assessment items on the computer. These testlets tend to occur at the lower linkage levels. They include items aligned to foundational nodes in the learning map, and also some English language arts and mathematics nodes. For these testlets, the test administrator must be very familiar with the student's typical modes of expressive communication. In ELA reading and language testlets, items focus on the cognitive skills that precede conventional literacy. These items are not traditional reading comprehension questions, but rather are designed to assess the skills identified in the learning map that are critical precursors to reading for meaning. These types of items are embedded in the context of shared reading of a text and are intended to mirror early literacy instruction. Items involving assessing skills such as identifying familiar objects or identifying words that describe familiar people. Teacher-administered ELA testlets follow the same structure as other ELA reading testlets. The story is presented first in its entirety, and then the story is presented again with items embedded within it or at the conclusion of the reading. In mathematics, teacher-administered testlets are often at the initial precursor level. The knowledge, skills, and understanding assessed at the initial precursor level are often foundational, but each in initial precursor node links directly to the grade level targets for the essential elements. The second type of teacher-administered testlet occurs in math. In some cases, the contents of math assessments at the higher linkage levels are better assessed offline. These are cases when representing the content online that would make the task too abstract or introduce unnecessary, I'm sorry, unnecessary complexity to the item. An example is procedural nodes about volume. Some nodes require the student to use objects to estimate volume. Recognizing three-dimensional objects and manipulating them on a screen requires perceptual and motor skills, neither of which are essential to the student's cognitive understanding of how to estimate volume. 
Many of these test lists are administered offline to make sure that they are accessible for students with blindness or visual impairment. Some math test lists are completely teacher administered for these reasons. In rare cases, a math test list will include some teacher administered and some computer delivered items in the same test list. The third category for teacher administered test lists is the writing assessment. All writing test lists are delivered outside of the DLM delivery system, and all students participating in the DLM assessment are assessed in writing. There are two types of writing test lists. Emergent writing test lists are used for students who do not yet have or are working on early symbolic understanding. Conventional writing test lists are used for students who have symbolic understanding and who can use writing tools to communicate. The system uses prior information about the student, including the first context survey responses, to determine which type of writing assessment the student should receive. Regardless of the type of writing assessment, students can use any ortho orthography-based tools for writing and everyday instruction that is offered students to access the 26 letters of the alphabet. For example, pens, pencils, keyboards, alternate keyboards, eye gaze displays of letters, alphabet flip charts and other alternate pencils, talking word processors, and word predictions, all are accessible tools for students. Next, we will review the structure of each of these three types of teacher-administered test lists that we just described. All three types of teacher-administered test lists have some common features. They all contain items plus an engagement activity, although the engagement activity is different depending on the type of test list. They all include directions to the test administrator inside the test list itself. They all contain scripted statements that guide the test administrator through the standardized test list administration process. Finally, the items are written to the test administrator who enters the response based on observation of the student behavior. Let's look more closely at the lower linkage level test list. In reading, the engagement activity is still the first thread of the text much like in the test lists described in other parts of this required of this training. The text is still presented to the student on screen, but the teacher reads the text to the student using shared reading strategies. DLM has created additional professional development modules um, on the topic of shared reading that if you'd like to learn more about these strategies, you can go out to those professional development modules on your own and um, can, can watch those videos. They're really excellent tools uh, for folks administering the DLM assessment. Um, also, in math, the engagement activity occurs when the test administrator presents objects used in the test list to the student and engages the student in exploring the materials. So here's an example of the directions found within the test administrator test list. So this uh, is an example of an initial precursor level math test list, and it starts by telling the test administrator in a general way what will happen within the test list. Then it specifies the materials that need to be collected and more information about those materials and recommended substitute objects if they are needed. It is also located on the test list information page that the test administrator would um, have been able to access prior to administering the assessment. We'll get into a little bit more about that later, the tips pages um, in this presentation. The last part of this directions page outlines the objects needed for how many items and in what order. The second type of teacher administered test list is the math test list for which the content is too difficult to assess on screens for students with significant cognitive disabilities. These mathematic test lists are structured the same way as test lists at the lower linkage level. The engagement activity still involves the student interacting with the object. The test administrator still follows on-screen directions and delivers a standard scripted series of items. Answer choices are still descriptions of student responses to the scripted statement. Remember that there are also a few math test lists that combine teacher-administered and computer-administered items. These are always at linkage levels where the nodes are appropriate for students with symbolic communication who can interact with the computer. Those test lists are identified to the test administrator on the first screen of the test list. All of the, the teacher-administered items are delivered first, 
Then there is a transition screen that tells the test administrator that the remaining item or items for the student to interact with are intended for the computer. Also remember that there are two types of writing testlets, the emergent and the conventional. During both types of writing testlets, the test administrator and the student will participate in an engagement activity related to choosing a topic about which to write. In emergent writing testlet, the student often chooses from an array of options selected from topics from which they had prior exposure to during instruction. Students taking conventional writing testlets also write about familiar topics. In both types of writing testlets, the student uses orthography-based tools for writing in everyday instructions, such as those that described before, pen, pencil, keyboard, etc. These tools must offer students access to all 26 letters of the alphabet. In the writing testlets, the test administrator delivers a structured writing activity to the student. The test administrator follows a series of on-screen instructions that guide a structured writing activity to assess the student's ability to use writing to communicate about information at an appropriate level given to his or her needs. The test administrator is given prompts to ask the student to engage in writing tasks. As the student works on the writing testlet, the test administrator observes student behaviors and writing products. The assessment items list student behaviors at each step of the writing process. The concluding item that has the test administrator evaluate the student writing product. Unlike many other writing assessments, the writing product is not submitted and scored by DLM. However, DPI recommends that educators save the writing example through the time of reporting so as to make sure there are no questions with the score report. Dynamic Learning Maps has created an FAQ document for writing that is available on the Educator Resource page. The link to this Educator Resource page is available at the end of the presentation. Next, we'll describe the general process for administering items and recording student responses for teacher-administered items. Teacher-administered testlets are written with standardized language. Anything in quotes should be presented verbatim to the student as it is written. The exceptions to this rule are only when student uses sign interpretation or language translation support as allowable and described in the Accessibility Manual. The two specific instructions for presenting items or instructions to students are show and say. They're written in all capital letters. Both of these are generic terms. We realize that some students will not be able to see what is shown, and other students will not be able to hear what is said. Show should be interpreted to mean present the materials or objects to the student using sensory modalities appropriate for that student. Say may require nonverbal communication, such as through signs. All teacher-administered items have answer choices that reflect possible student responses to the statement or questions in the item that was presented. The test administrator evaluates the student response, chooses the best description of what was observed, and records his or her choice in the KITE system. The test administrator must be familiar with the student's typical modes for expressive communication because any mode for, communi for communicating a response is considered acceptable. Testless at the lower linkage levels include no response as one of, as one of the response options. This is an appropriate choice if the student has not provided an intentional response. If the student is capable of producing an intentional response but is not doing so, for example, due to distractions or behavior problems, it is better to use the exit does not save button and return to the testlet when the student is more engaged. Further instructions on selecting the appropriate answer choice based on student responses are provided in the test administration manual. Here's an example of an item screen that could be embedded in the second reading of an ELA text. The educator directions provide instructions on how to interact with the student. The lines presented in bold say, or after say, are said directly to the student. The actions described after show are performed by the test administrator for the student. As the test administrator completes the steps, he or she then observes how the student responds to the item and records responses by selecting the best match. In this case, the answer option of indicates multiple objects has been selected. Once selected, the test administrator then uses the buttons to move on to the next screen. 
Here's an example of an item screen for a lower linkage level testlet and mask. The scripted statements appear on a previous screen, and the item contains five answer choices that could describe the student's response. The process of responding to items in the KITE system for teacher-administered testlets is the same as in computer-administered testlets. Depending on the testlet, the item may appear on the same screen with some of the prior scripted text, or may appear by itself, as it does with this example. The test administrator selects the answer choice that corresponds with the student's response by selecting it with a mouse or using the tab to scroll through the choices and the enter key to select, or by touching the answer choice on a touch screen such as an iPad. The answer can be changed while on the screen or by returning to the screen from another point within the testlet. The basic navigation buttons also work the same in teacher-administered testlets as in the computer-administered testlets. Back and next buttons navigate screens within a testlet. In the bottom center of the screen is an exit does not save button. This allows users to immediately stop the test. However, responses in the testlet are not saved, so the student will have to start the testlet over again if this option is used. If the student just needs a short break, the system will allow for a 28-minute period with no activity before the student is logged out of the system automatically. Both the exit does not save option and the 28-minute break period do have follow-up questions that will ask you, are you sure you want to exit and do not save? The 28-minute period break will ask you, again, if you are ready to log out or to continue. The read button at the bottom of the screen shown here will not be activated for the spring 2015 administration as discussed in uh, communications with districts. Um, it may still appear, however, on some of the test lists even though the function does not exist. Now we're going to take a look at the computer delivered test list. Tests delivered directly to students through the computer are designed with the assumption that students can either interact independently with the computer using special devices, such as alternate keyboards, touch screens, and switches, or that the test administrator will be helping them navigate the screen. Computer delivered test lists in DLM are most common at the upper linkage level, where the content being assessed is appropriate for the delivery through the computer. These test lists are in reading, and in language, and in math. So now we're going to take a look at the structure of the computer-delivered test lists, and you'll see some commonalities between the teacher-administered and the computer-administered. Test lists in English language arts and mathematics are delivered differently based on research about effective instructional practices for students with significant cognitive disabilities. However, both content area test lists begin with an engagement activity to motivate students and activate prior knowledge and to prepare students for the cognitive process required for the item. During the reading assessment, students participate in two readings of the text. The first reading is a shared reading activity to familiarize them with the entire context and serve as an engagement activity. The second reading includes questions appropriately embedded within and at the end of the text to reduce the cognitive load and reliance on long-term memory. Mathematics test lists start with the engagement activity that also provides a context for the questions. The engagement activity does not require a response. Mathematics test lists are built around a common scenario activity to investigate related facets of student understanding of the targeted content. It is appropriate to provide the human read aloud support for both the English language arts and the mathematics test lists based upon student need. Human read aloud should be documented in the P&P if offered and provided to a student. Test administrators should provide careful attention to the information provided in the testlet information pages, or also known as the tips pages. And again, we'll get into these in a little bit more detail towards the end of the presentation. Both ELA and Mathematic testlets provide a screen at the beginning of the testlet to signify the start of the test. For the ELA testlets, a screen like this one directs the student to read the text and tells them to think about the details while reading. Remember, the first read of the text is considered the engagement activity. While some students taking the computer-delivered test lists may require support to navigate the test from one screen to the next or enter their responses, it is expected that the student will engage with the reading of the text and answer the questions independently. 
Students will then read through the text. They may have the text read aloud by the test administrator if that is option that is um, documented in the personal needs profile. It is important to allow the student as much independence within the system as appropriate. In mathematics, the engagement activity in this example provides a context, test, and activates the cognitive process about putting things together. This activity prepares the students for items about addition. Again, there are a variety of item types that students may encounter when taking the computer-delivered testlet. While most DLM items are single select multiple choice with text or images as answer choices, students may also see a variety of other items. For instance, students may see multiple select multiple choice items with text or images as answer choices, questions that require them to match two lists, items that require them to sort into objects, and text selection items. The student practice activities contain one or more examples of each of these items listed here. In general, VLM uses the most straightforward item type possible that allows for the quality assessment of the node. This is why complex item types are only used occasionally. This example here shows a single select multiple choice item with the text of the answer choice. Again, this is the most common type of computer-delivered testlet that students will see. Students may see single select multiple choice items with pictures as the answer choice as well. This type of a question shows a multiple select multiple choice item, and the student can make more than one answer choice. This one asks students to match items from the two lists. In addition, students may also encounter questions asking them to sort objects into categories. For non-switch users, the questions asking students to sort will be in the form of a drag and a drop. For instance, in this example, the student would select a circle and then drag it into a box on the right, either by selecting the mouse button and moving the mouse, or taking the assessment on an iPad or smart board, touching the object, and dragging it to the desired location. If indicated on the personal needs and preferences profile that the student uses a one or two switch system, he or she will be delivered a different type of sorting item called click and place. For single switch system users, if the item on the left is selected, the system scans items within the group or drop zone from the top to the bottom and will allow students to click the switch again to place them into the box on the right. For two switch system users, if the object on the left is selected, the student starts tabbing within the drop zone from top to bottom before placing the object or item into the selected box. If a switch user receives any other sorting items besides the click to place and it is not able to independently answer, the test administrator may take instructions from the student to move the chosen objects to the desired box. The last type of computer delivered item the student might see is called select text. These are only used in some English language arts assessments at the upper grade. Here the student would have to choose the appropriate word in a text based in the question. Certain words will have boxes around them to indicate that they are answer choices. Now we're going to go over the procedures on how students will respond to items once in the test list. When a student comes to a question in both ELA and math, no answer choice will be highlighted. Once the student selects the question, a box appears around the answer choice, and the student is able either to select next or back or travel through the testlet screen, and the same answer choice will stay once it's been selected. If the student would like to change his or her answer at any time while in the same testlet, he or she may go back to the screen with the question on it and simply select the preferred answer choice. Testlets at the lowest linkage level, the initial precursor level, includes no response as one of the response options for the subject areas of ELA and mathematics. This is an appropriate choice if the student has not provided an intentional response. However, testlets at the distal precursor to the successor linkage level do not include no response options like the one shown here on the slide. If you administer an item to a student and they do not provide a response, you can do two different things. The first is exit does not save, and you can try to administer the test at a different time when the student is in a better spot to take the assessment. The second option is if the student has not provided an intentional response, then the test administrator should leave each item blank for which the student has not responded and submit the testlet for scoring using the exit save function at the end of the testlet. 
It is possible that with the next assignment of a lower TESLA level that a student may be able to provide an appropriate response. Test administrators must administer a minimum of two consecutive test lists in each content area. When a student has not provided an intentional response for items within the two test lists, again, I want to repeat, if the student has not provided an intentional response for all items within those two test lists, the student can be considered a test participant in the given subject area. It will be a district decision whether or not to continue testing the student after two test lists in each content area have been administered. The student's score report will indicate the lowest level of accountability. Again, on this slide, we're just looking at the basic navigations that we saw on the teacher-administered test list. You can see that they still have all of the same functions of back, next, and exit does not save. So after test administrators have completed both first contact survey and educator portal and the personal needs profile, it's time to start planning and scheduling the test administration. Test administrators should verify that all student information is correct within the portal and provide ample time to coordinate testing sessions prior to the test window. Test administrators will also need to make sure that any technology um, preparations that are needed for the assessment are taken care of. For example, you may have students who use assistive devices that need to be checked to make sure they're compatible within the KITE client test delivery system. Technology preparations could also include just reserving computer labs for testing days. In addition, the test administrator will need to make sure that the secure browser KITE client has been downloaded onto the testing device. The CLM has identified the role of a technical liaison within their um, testing system, and this individual can help you download the secure browser from the DLM webpage shown here on the slide. Um, you can see there's various versions of the KITE client that you could use for computers within your classroom. There's a PC and a Mac version, as well as an iPad and a Chromebook. So you just need to make sure to communicate with whoever is helping you download those, which version you'll need, and make sure that you've identified that testing device for the student. If you have students who will be taking the Braille version of the DLM assessment and you have indicated Braille on the personal needs and preferences profile, please make sure to look at the test administrator manual and the accessibility manual for assistance with those forms. If Braille is indicated on the P&P, your district assessment coordinators will be sent print-ready BRF files from DLM to be embossed within the district. DLM has created a Braille fact sheet that offers additional information about the Braille forms and the DLM process. This fact sheet is located on the DLM Educator Resource page on the right-hand side of the screen. If you have questions or concerns about Braille forms or for students that are Braille, or, I'm sorry, blind and visually impaired, please feel free to contact me at the phone number and email listed at the end of this presentation. Braille forms are being created for grades 3 through 5 at the target and successor, successor levels, and in grades 6 through high school at the proximal precursor, target, and successor levels. However, not all parts of the test at every grade level have Braille equivalents. There are, when, when those are not provided, test administrators will be able to use other approaches to deliver assessments to students who are blind or have visual impairments. Where a Braille version is not available, the system will deliver an alternate BVI form if there is one available. The test administrator may also read the test to the student using the human read aloud guidelines and provide manipulatives as instructed on the testlet information page. It's important for test administrators to feel comfortable with both types of testlets, the computer delivered and the teacher administered testlet, as it will make the test session run more smoothly. Students and teachers may become more familiar with each type of testlet by utilizing the practice activities and release testlets in the KITE system. Prior to testing, test administrators will need to view the testlet information page to know any objects or manipulatives that may be needed for test administration. This will help teachers plan for students who may have special devices or may need specific manipulatives for a testlet or subject. Teachers will need to verify that they have retrieved all students' usernames and passwords for their students by locating the student test ticket. If you've had students participate in the field test throughout this school year, their student username and password remains the same for this entire academic year. 
The test ticket will provide the, also the name of the testlet assigned to the student, which will be necessary to match with the testlet information page. Again, details about these processes are provided within the test administration manual. The student's username and password is what you will use to enter into Kite Client in order to begin testing. The testlet information page, it will be moved from the educator resource page into educator portal and will be considered secure material moving into the spring operational assessment. The test administration manual provides guidance on how to locate the tips page as well as how to use them. The tips page includes important information that test administrators need to know prior to administering the testlet. These pages include information such as the number of items on the testlet, the type of testlet such as if it's computer or teacher delivered, and the standard being measured. In addition, the TIPS pages provide a list of materials that may be needed by the student for the assessment, as well as specific accessibility supports that may not be offered to the student due to the content being measured. It is crucial that educators locate and use these pages in order to ensure a valid result on the DLM assessment. The TIPS page also includes specific information related to the use of manipulatives. DLM has created a guidance document on manipulatives called the Mathematics Materials Collection for Spring, and it's available on the Educator Resource page. The table found within this guidance document summarizes lists of items per grade level. When specific items are listed in parentheses, these are examples of objects specifically mentioned on some of the test lists. Again, objects may be substituted. You do not need to go out and to purchase any manipulative specifics for testing. We want to make sure that students are familiar with the, the manipulatives and that they are used in their day-to-day -day instructional practices. When scheduling a test session, there are many aspects that test administrators should consider. For instance, teachers need to consider about the length of each test session. Using the release test list, this will help teachers know the approximate time it will take their students to complete the test. This way that they will be able to better plan for the number of testlets to administer without fatiguing the students. Testlets in English language arts are expected to take 10 to 15 minutes each, while in math they should take about 10 to 20 minutes. I'm sorry, 10 to 20 minutes for writing and 10 and 15 minutes for English language arts and math. Since the DLM system is adaptive, the assessment of the next testlet level is dependent upon students' response. For this reason, only one testlet per content area is assigned at a time. Test administrators will need to check back into Educator Portal for the delivery of the next testlet level and the tips page. The system typically looks for students who are ready to test at the top and the bottom of the hour, so at 10 o'clock and at 10.30, for instance. However, during peak testing times, the next assignment may take longer. CPI recommends that districts plan on testing only twice per day, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. Considering schedules is vital when dealing with the test window that, and making sure that all test administrations are completed. This may include any support staff that also work with the students or that will help with testing or to monitor your classroom during test administration. You don't, want to make, you don't want to plan to test a student who does not interact with the system independently if you're the only adult in the classroom with 12 students. If you have several students needing to assess, estimate the number of sessions you will need per student and start scheduling enough within the test window to allow time for all students to have as many sessions as necessary. This is just an example of a sample schedule. You can spread it out throughout the entire test window. Again, remember the DLM test window runs from March 30th through May 22nd. So you can test it um, throughout that entire window, maybe one testlet um, you know, per week or a couple every day or so, um, whatever is best for your students. Designating a testing location is an essential part of planning. The testing location should be a quiet area that is clear of any possible distractions to the students. If it is necessary for the student to test within the classroom where other students are present, make sure to arrange the testing display such as the computer monitor so that it is only visible to the student being assessed. Teachers may also need to set up an accessibility device or manipulatives needed during um, and before the testing begins. It's important to evaluate your student's behavior 
when thinking about testing. We understand that not every day is a good day for testing. Therefore, use your professional judgment and reschedule testing for another time if your student is not having a good day on the intended testing time. If the student gets tired or is distracted sooner than expected, find a place to stop the current test and return to it later. Next, we'll just talk about a few do's and don'ts when you're administering the test just to keep in mind. Do provide flexibility in how students access each item and the materials required to complete it. For example, standard administration procedures for typical arrangements for the test administrator, student, and computer across different types of testlets. However, the test administrator may need to adapt the physical arrangement based on the student's physical needs and use of special equipment. Other examples of this flexibility include the substitution of objects as needed and the use of off-computer response modes. Also, do maintain consistency in the student's interaction with the concepts being measured. All students do not have to interact with identical materials or respond the same response mode, but they should all have to complete the same cognitive or linguistic task. This means that questions cannot be rephrased and items cannot be rearranged. Special instructions are given for materials that may be substituted to help the test administrator maintain this consistency. Do use your best judgment about the use of breaks. The goal should be to complete a testlet in a single session. Yet breaks may be needed when a student is fatigued, disengaged, or having behavioral problems that would interfere with assessment of what he or she knows and can do. Do represent response options outside of the system to maximize the student's ability to respond. For example, students who use eye gaze to communicate, test administrators may represent the answer options in an alternate format or layout to ensure that the student can indicate a clear response. Do be aware of special equipment that the student may need in order to access the test materials. And do define the unknown terms generically to allow a student to apply the definition to the problem or question in which the term was used. Exceptions to this rule are noted on the tips pages. Um, specific to that testlet. Practices that should be avoided are the ones that interfere with students' independent responses to the content of items. The following are descriptions of supports that are not allowed. Test administrators should not repeat the question again after the student has selected a response or in any other way to prompt the student to choose a different answer. The use of any physical prompts or hand-over-hand -hand guidance to the correct answer is prohibited. Also, the test administrator should never remove answer options or give content hints to the student. When the student is asked to choose an answer from among the objects presented, the test administrator should not arrange or rearrange the objects to prompt a correct answer, such as putting the correct object closer to the student. If you have questions regarding a support is allowable, educators can contact either the help desk or the DPI before administering the testlet to a student. These are the resource pages that I was talking about it's in the presentation. The DLM Wisconsin web page is kind of the, the home page for Wisconsin that includes all of our test administration manuals and links to the educator resource page found below here. The Educator Resource web page includes all of those little fact sheets that DLM created regarding Braille and writing and the use of manipulatives. Um, and so that would also be helpful for teachers. Also from the Educator Resource page are links to the familiar text for each grade level within the DLM assessment. But if you have any other specific questions or you want to talk specifically about a student, you can feel free to give me a call. Send me an email. My phone number as well is 608-267-3164. Thanks, everyone.